नमस्कार रयत ऑनलाइन स्कूल एजुकेशन जुनिअर कॉलेज या प्रकल्पामध्ये पुन्हा एकदा आपलं स्वागत सब्जेक्ट फिजिक्स स्टँडर्ड ट्वेल्थ युनिट नंबर फोर थर्मोडायनेमिक्स आणि सब युनिट आर फोर पॉइंट सिक्स फोर पॉइंट सिक्स पॉइंट वन फोर पॉइंट सिक्स पॉइंट टू फोर पॉइंट सिक्स पॉइंट थ्री दिस प्रेझेंटेशन इज मेड बाय मिस्टर पी एम शिंदे ज्युनियर कॉलेज टीचर कर्मयर भाऊराव पाटील विद्यालय अँड ज्युनियर कॉलेज भुई वी नो दॅट इन द थर्मोडायनेमिक्स वेन टू ऑब्जेक्ट आर ॲट द सेम टेम्परेचर वी कॅन से दे आर इन थर्मल इक्विलिप वी नो दॅट द झिरोथ लॉ ऑफ द थर्मोडायनेमिक्स इफ अकॉर्डिंग टू धिस लॉ इफ बी अँड सी आर सेपरेटली इन इक्विलिब्रियम विथ ए दॅट इज इफ टी ए इक्वल टू टी बी मीन्स टेम्परेचर ऑफ बॉडी ए इज इक्वल टू टेम्परेचर ऑफ बॉडी बी अँड टी ए इक्वल टू टी सी इट इम्प्लाइज दॅट टी बी इट विल बी इक्वल टू टी सी दॅट इज द सिस्टीम्स बी अँड सी आर ऑल्सो इन द थर्मल इक्विलिब्रियम विथ द सिस्टीम ए now this can be represented as on this slide you can see three systems three thermodynamic systems a b and c initially the system a and b are in the thermal equilibrium that is the temperatures are same for the system a and system b system a again is in equilibrium with system c means a and c are in thermal equilibrium then from these we can say the system b and system c they are in also thermal equilibrium that is the temperature of the system b is equal to temperature of the system c hence we can say the system a b and c all are in thermal equilibrium this is according to the zeroth law of the thermodynamics now the first point is the thermodynamic state variable now these thermodynamic state variables these are nothing but the property of a system or we can say the system variable to describe the characteristics of a system for example pressure volume temperature density mass of the system these variables are used and we call such variables as state variables these are the measurable properties of the thermodynamic system and therefore we call these properties or these variables as a macroscopic variables of the system because we can measure the properties we can evaluate the properties in the system therefore these are the macroscopic variables these are the measurable properties and therefore we call these properties as a macroscopic variables of a system now the variables they are of two types first one is the intensive variables and second one is the extensive variables intensive variables they do not depend upon the size of the system the variables like pressure temperature density they are same in the system if the system is divided into compartments the pressure temperature and density such a variables they remain same therefore these are the intensive variables here is a system which has two compartments though there are two compartments the pressure temperature and density remains same in case of the extensive variables this depends upon the size of the system total mass we can say capital m and the total internal energy we can say capital u of the system are equally divided into two compartments now suppose this is the initial condition of the system twice m is the mass of the gas twice v is the volume of the gas pressure is p temperature t and rho is the density now if this system is divided into two compartments then pressure temperature and density they remain same during the final condition after the partition the pressure temperature and density remain same therefore these three quantities or three variables they are the intensive variables but the mass of the system the mass of the initial system is twice m it gets divided into in first compartment and small m in the second compartment the volume is twice v it also gets divided into two compartments equally that is v in this way the extensive variables they can be divided into two compartments but the intensive variables like pressure temperature and density remain same in all the compartments there are some examples of the intensive properties and extensive properties boiling point color temperature hardness these are the intensive properties they remain same in the system there are some extensive properties like volume mass size weight 
and length. These properties, they are the extensive properties, extensive variables. They can change with the initial conditions. Now the next point is the thermodynamic equilibrium. In this chapter, a system is in thermodynamic equilibrium if the following conditions of the equilibrium are satisfied. In this chapter, we have came across the thermal equilibrium. This one is the first equilibrium and the mechanic equilibrium and the chemical equilibrium. These are the other two equilibrium in the thermodynamic equilibrium. Now we will discuss one by one. First one is the mechanical equilibrium. In the mechanical equilibrium, there are no unbalanced forces within the system and between the systems and its surrounding. When there are no unbalanced forces within the system and between the system and its surrounding, the system is said to be in the mechanical equilibrium. The system is said to be in the mechanical equilibrium when the pressure throughout the system and between the system and its surrounding is the same. A system is in mechanical equilibrium when the pressure in it is the same throughout and does not change with time. Such a systems are called as the systems in mechanical equilibrium. In this diagram, we can see the mechanical equilibrium force, balance, pressure times area. Hence, force and pressure, these are the balanced forces and there is no unbalanced force. Therefore, this system is in mechanical equilibrium. Now the second one is the chemical equilibrium. In the chemical equilibrium, there are no chemical reactions going on within the system. There is no transfer of matter from one part of the system to the other part due to the process of the diffusion. The chemical composition is same throughout the system and does not change with time. In this diagram, we can see there is a closed system. Inside this system, there is a water vapor. They remains constant throughout the experiment. And therefore, this system, we can say it is in chemical equilibrium because there is no exchange of any matter. Now, the third system is the thermal equilibrium. The temperature of the system does not change with time. The system is called as the thermal equilibrium equilibrium and the heat transfer it takes place from the hotter body to the colder body till the temperature becomes equal. Now here are two bodies first one is at 0 degree Celsius and second one is at 100 degree Celsius. After certain time the first body receives the energy and the, and the second body which is the hotter body it emits the energy and it is received by the first one. This exchange of heat it continues till both the bodies acquire certain equal temperatures and then we can say the systems are in thermal equilibrium. Now in this diagram, in the first diagram there are different temperatures at the different points but in second picture we can see that there is a thermal equilibrium because the temperature is same inside the system. Now this system we can say it is in thermal equilibrium. Next point is the thermodynamic state variables and the equation of state. The, the equilibrium state of the system we consider there is a gas system can be completely described by the values of pressure, volume, temperature, density, mass of the system etc. There are some state variables which are mathematically related. The mathematical relations between the state variables is nothing but the equation of state. Mathematical relations kuntya hi don variables madla dara pan manda hita prayetna keela tela ekhada relation madla dara pan thewla tar te equation of the state ho shat. Ashas paddhati cha ek equation of the state apna lek standard equation mahi ta hai for an ideal gas the equation of the state is the ideal gas equation that is PV is equal to N R T where P is the pressure V is the volume of the gas. Small n is the number of moles of the gas. Capital R is the universal gas constant. And capital T is the temperature of the system. For a fixed amount of a gas, there are only two independent variables. That is P and V or P and T or V and temperature. Means for a fixed amount of gas, that is for n equal to constant, n equal to constant, we can relate pressure and volume, pressure and temperature or volume or temperature. The graphical representation of the equation of the state of the system is called as the PV diagram. From this relation, we plot a graph of pressure and volume 
pressure on y axis and volume on the x axis we can plot a graph and such a graph is called as the pv diagram or we call it as a pv curve or we call it as a indicator diagram of the system this is the one of the example of the pv diagram on the y axis there is a pressure on the x axis there is a volume this is the typical pv diagram a is the initial point where the volume of the gas is v1 and pressure is p1 as time passes there will be change in the variables at the point b the volume of the gas will be v2 it is increased from v1 to v2 this increase we call it as a v and the pressure it also changed pressure decreases and it is p2 pressure decreases from p1 to p2 such a relation it can be explained with the help of the pv diagram these are the pv diagrams this pv diagram is the relation between pressure and volume at constant temperature and therefore this curve is called as an isotherm iso means same therm means temperature at constant temperature this curve can be obtained now we will discuss about the pv diagrams the system and their behavior using pv diagrams can be discussed now we know that in a system closed in a cylinder now there is a cylinder there is one piston inside the cylinder there is a gas it has a particular volume v and there is a fixed pressure we know this equation this equation gives the work done when there is a change in the position of the piston if the piston changed its initial position then we can integrate the work done if there is a change in the position of the piston there will be work done and this work done will vary from v1 to v2 if we integrate this equation if we integrate the work done from v1 to v2 we get the integration of v1 to v2 of p dv that is pressure and change in the volume we can integrate this product and we will get the total work done the relation between pressure and volume can be explained graphically the gas confined to a cylinder with a movable chainless and massless piston can be expanded or compressed varying the pressure we will discuss all these parameters in the next slide now if we plot a graph of pressure versus volume we get a curve and there will be a area under curve which is graphical representation of the value of the integration in the equation and this value of the integration is nothing but the work done in changing the volume of the gas now this is the curve and area under the curve this much area under the curve is nothing but the work done in changing the volume from v1 to v2 we can graphically calculate this area under the curve therefore the value of work done it is nothing but the integration of pdv and it will be equal to the area under the curve in the pv diagram now there are certain cases if v increases means volume increases consider this system of a gas when the volume will be increased if the piston will be moved in the upward direction there will be increase in the volume of the gas at the same time the pressure decreases and therefore the work done will be positive in this diagram we can see the work done is positive that is work is nothing but the area under the curve this is the initial position of the piston at that time there is a volume of the gas is v1 and pressure will be p1 when piston moved upward there will be increase in the volume volume changes from v1 to v2 and pressure will be pressure will decreased from p1 to p2 this will be the decrease in the pressure this amount of the pressure it will be decreased pressure and therefore if we integrate these values that is the p dv from volume v1 to v2 we get the number which is greater than 0 and therefore there will be area under curve we can say the work done is positive similarly if volume decreases again there is a same system so as to decrease the volume of a gas we must apply certain force or there will be displacement of this piston in the downward direction there will be decrease in the volume inward displacement of the piston it is required and at the same time the pressure on the gas it will be increased in this case this is the initial volume of the gas there will be change in the volume of the gas from v1 to v2 there will be increase in the pressure from p1 to p2 
and this will be the direction of the curve. Now the area under the curve it will be less than C. In this case the work done is negative. This arrow also indicates there is a negative work done. In this way we can explain the negative work done from the PV diagram. In the third case the volume changes but there is a no displacement of the piston that is pressure is constant there is a no displacement of the piston and pressure will be constant what will be the work done work done will be positive since there is a no change in the position of the pistons the volume will be same the volume will remain same when the volume of the gas changes from v1 to v2 at a constant pressure the curve is actually a line parallel to the volume axis now this is the curve it is represented by a line which is parallel to the volume axis the work done during the volume change at constant pressure is equal to w equal to p into bracket v2 minus v1 and this will be greater than zero that is the positive value of the work done in this way there is a positive work done when there is a increase in the volume but the pressure is constant we get the positive work done.